So what I said is, this is the previous slide. It's showing that learning the admin admin course can able to manage all different type of different types of uh, data prop clients can able to admin administrate. That's what this slide shows. But what I told is nowadays IBM doesn't have this variance various kind of flavors in appliance data for appliance. That nowadays the latest is IBM is providing the only one virtual machine. It's not in not on hardware side. Uh, basically, uh, I don't know about the hardware side, but this is what the approach is: having one big appliance which has all the models. So wherever you need, uh, whenever you need the particular blocking to be activated, for example, integration features or security features or B2B features and the message latency features, whatever the thing you want to activate, you can download the license from the IBM. You can activate corresponding the model, corresponding model from the data prop lines. That's how it works. But still, uh, the still latency and uh, XI, XC10 or the caching appliances are still separate, but XS40, XI52, and the XG, sorry, XG45, XA52, and uh, the B2B6, XB62. These three appliances, all the features comes together in one appliance. Okay, I will, I will tell you more. Okay, uh, once, once I show you uh, the, the console. Okay. So before taking this course, I hope you should be familiar with these things: networking protocol, security, and XML, right? Okay, um, so after completing this course, uh, these are the things you can able to do. Uh, you can able to uh, you can able to um, find the use case and uh, you can provide the architectural scenario for a particular use case. How you can able to use the utilize the data for appliance for the particular use case, and you can able to perform the administrative task uh, on data power using four different ways. Um, actually, it's a three different ways it's showing here. Um, CLI and Web BI and XML management, but four that's a four four ways actually. One is SSH actually, and you can able to download and upgrade the firmware of the plans and user management, SSL management, and you can able to do a load balancing on data power itself uh, without any uh, third party load balancing device. And you can able to do a simple network management protocol, SNMP, SNMP monitoring, and troubleshooting. And uh, you can troubleshoot the services, and you can able to uh, manage the loggings. Okay. So let's go to these are the. the we will we will just ignore these things. So this is the initial setup. Uh, we will come back to this later. This is set, this is telling about how you need to set up the hardware and how you need to. But this is this is not we are going to do actually, right? So this is actually in data center. Uh, so we are not allowed to be in data center. We we will not be allowed to be in data center to do all those things in for especially in production data center. So basically, the separate team will be that infrastructure team for the data center guys. They will do all those things, bad, bad, all those things. But I will tell you how to insulate the appliance using the virtual machine. Okay, so you will get the feel of uh, booting and initializing the real hardware image, but uh, without entering into data center. Okay. So this is the basic introduction you need. So this unit explains what is the why XML is important in so architecture, some theoretical concepts, and uh, common use case for IBM so appliance and uh, features of IBM so appliance. So you know, obviously, I don't want to give you uh, background about what is X XML. 
how x how xml how xml what how xml is very good and um, what is the role of xml in uh, enterprise service integration so these are all you know right i will just join hi sayed hi sayed thanks for joining hi sayed uh, we have anup here anup anup is from canada and uh, he would like to learn as like you he would like to learn both admin and development course we have just started the admin course and uh, uh, oi anup and sayed oi can't you uh, basically i can give, I, I will introduce first uh, anup can you mute yourself anup do you got of nice okay so basically let me give my introduction about myself because uh, anyway you joined so i am my name is jayaram so i have i have uh, nearly 17 years of it experience and i have been working as a senior architect in one of the financial industry and um, I am, I am I have been more good experience on middleware like uh, IBM middleware more than uh, 12 years and working on data power since last 6 years and uh, giving providing architectural guidance and imp solution implementation guidance to the team so this is what my basic background I live in uh, uh, Bitswork USA so that's what about myself so basically anup and uh, sayed why can't you introduce yourself <laughs> yeah, this is a yet and I uh, have around the uh, 20 years approximately. I was initially a DBA, Unix admin, you know, and uh, supporting those storage as well, EMC, uh, 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 Symmetrics that time, and, and then moved into Informatica. Uh, uh, then I was with professional services, Informatica professional services. Uh, then I moved into uh, middleware support but i'm not uh, good in java well no very little java but i was supporting M uh, uh, and uh, after that uh, i was in the enterprise architecture so that's all my uh, experiences okay cool basically sayath has uh... A roam around the all IT technology area. He has a very good experience in all sites, front end, back end, data warehousing, batch job, and middleware integration. Everything he has covered in his past experience. It's very good news. Probably um, we will. That's okay. But so that's that is what. So you are you are going to gain. From this class, you are going to gain all the knowledge of my experience. So you are going to, yeah, yeah. So should we have? Um, so do we have to know Java to 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 because you know when I was supporting application servers, 
I really, really need to know Java. If you have, if you know Java, you would be able to support it easily. I mean, a lot of logs, a lot of frameworks, you know, people use So that was one of the thing I was missing. So Java is required for this or no? No, uh, if you say data power or any middleware components, uh, uh, um, for sake of uh, middleware, uh, data power, you don't need to really know about what is Java. You, you don't need to know about Java. Without Java, there is no nothing nothing you can do here in Java, basically. In data power. Okay, <clears throat> okay what is the prospect of you know market? Uh, Sorry. For, for the you know, what is the what is the job you know job market for SOA appliance, which is a data power, right? So yeah. what is the is it? Uh, uh, job market is the what are the so the so the clients who are all having the IBM as a business business vendor. So everybody is now started using a data for appliance. So if from that bad, you can able to sense that how many clients are going to use the data power now. Uh, if they are already using data power, they are migrating to the latest version. Probably they were using XI 50 or something like that. Three or four year old appliance which is not supported by IBM. So they are going to migrate their data properties to into new data properties version. And also if the customers is not using the data power, IBM is forcing the customers to use the data power to all the customers uh, how, how, so who are all using IBM as a vendor. So from that way, you can able to sense the data power job market in data power, I think. So it's, all um, it also relates to MQ, right? Because most of the people who use data power, they will integrate to the to their MQ MQ broker, correct? Yes, they will do. Yeah. So basically, if you are a developer, if you don't know a broker and MQ, that's fine. You can still you can able to uh, uh, learn about uh, data power development. You can able to find a job in data power development. But if you want to be an admin side, um, I, I would be straightforward. Uh, admin side, uh, the team, the infrastructure team will really look for the guy who can able to manage the data power as well as the MQ and a little bit of MQ on broker. That's what they need. But they don't need a guy who will do all the VAS, VAS and VAS clustering and um, VAS administration and MQ administration, broker administration. It's, it's not the case. You need to know that data pro admin 100%, but at least 10 or 20% knowledge on the MQ side as well as the broker side to handle some basic level of uh, troubleshooting. That's, that's what you need to know. So, running a part of a broker also. Uh, sorry? Are you going to cover a little bit? Uh... Uh, part of uh, to cover here broker in this course, uh, but if you want, we can do it later. Um, but uh, yeah, we can do it later, but we can do it as a separate uh, small uh, course kind of thing. We can do it later, but this is specifically we will go teach you and uh, we will be we, you both of you will become a group of data for development admin in and out. So I am going to tell what what all uh, what all the companies are doing now and what they will expect to do. So I'm going to cover all the details. So wherever you go as a data power SME subject matter expertise, you can able to handle or survive yourself without any trouble. So even I can able to provide you support once you get into the new job, I can able to give my support for one or two months free uh, in case if you are having any problem in facing some customer related issues from data power side, you don't help get any help from them their side. I can able to help you for one or two months till you become a very familiar on the architecture. Do 
sure we will do that no problem it's a sayed the one sayed your sayed is start speaking echo is coming from his side is it i muted yeah if you are muted we it's calm now still still you are getting echo no right yeah good so we will continue so that's what i am just explaining the role of xml in sova so basically why the xml is important in sova sova is a service oriented architecture which is basically exposing a service uh, which can be developed in any language which can be used by consumed by any other languages uh, basically to support that interoperability uh, there's a common language needs to be used by the by the languages that's called that's why they choose xml so the xml can be understandable by any language any platform like uh, java dot net unix or c c plus um, plus any language or any platform can able to understand the xml they have their own passes so it's easy to communicate through xml to any other language so that they choose xml for the communication medium for implementing the sova based architectures like sova based service service oriented architecture so there is a lot of things we can do in X in xml in sova here some of the things one is the creating a web service which is the visdel number one you see which is visdel means web service description language if you have uh, opened on any web services you should know this uh, which is also using used by uh, xml is used here and soap soap is the request format and response format of the message wherever you are going to uh, invoke the web service uh, via http over soap protocol and security tokens uh, can be also be handled by xml and uh, the database can be accessed uh, by xml because nowadays database are supporting xml formats so this is some basic kind of uh, uh, diagram shows that wherever so where we can able to use the xml in sova world so here some of the descriptions specification and its descriptions are here i probably you should be able to know that uh, except couple of things uh, yeah, you might be know xml schema also is called xsd xml schema definition and soap is a protocol simple object access simple object oriented access protocol and vistel is the uh, language format for defining the web services Uh, which has the, all the um, operations and port number and endpoint URL to call the web service. Everything I will, I will. You will get some more information once we get into the exercise level. XSLT is the language which transforms uh, one message, one one message into another message, like um, XML to XML or XML to SOAP, XML to JSON. JSON to JSON is the uh, the latest. Uh, latest uh, uh, javascript object notation which is called json which is the latest uh, message type which is used by all the lightweight devices like phones tablets and basically all the iphone and androids are, are using the uh, json type because X, xml is a heavy load uh, it's a high it's a heavy weight protocol uh, message type but json is the lightweight message so it, so that that is the best suitable for all the lightweight devices nowadays so all the all all those things are used by uh, json so but uh, so json is not listed here but note it down and xpath xpath is the formation of how we call particular object in xml and xml digital signatures is nothing but how we can able to uh, store in the signatures in xml document and xml encryption is nothing but how we can pass the data encrypted in xml saml is nothing but it's a, it's a formation of a security assessment token uh, which is a kind of sso if you hear about the single sign on uh, it's uh, it, it it's supported by saml in data power here 
if you are not here. So both of you have a knowledge about single sign on, right? Yeah, so SAML is uh, a uh, protocol for single sign on user in data. Yeah, UI for UI uh, for UI based thing they don't use data power for all the UI's web components everything goes to the uh, product called identity management server IAM which is called identity access management server which handles the generates the tokens and which handles the user uh, management the SAML is only for service side yes you're right. That's what I told you now, uh, right? Uh, JSON is the sim lightweight message type, which can be fit, which can be fit for all the lightweight devices like uh, uh, Android, tablets, iPhones, everything. Still, it's good, it's okay. But uh, if you come back to the uh, organization services backend, you might have already implemented a very long back, with, uh, yeah, ten years of services already providing a very good. Uh, very very good uh, usage for your organization. Why you do? Why you want? Why do you want to change your existing protocol of services? Unnecessary money. So by the same time, you don't want you, you. By the so the objective is, I don't want to change my backend services, which is running on SOAP on XML basis. At the same time, I will support the new devices like lightweight devices like mobiles, tablets. So while they are trying to communicate with my services, my services are in uh, the SOAP or XML based, but they are all um, um, JSON type based. So I need some gateway who can able to handle this JSON to XML SOAP and SOAP to JSON conversion. So that is what the use case comes here. So using JSON, okay. So also, if you define the services, it's not a good way to use JSON for defining the services. Because once you define the services, you need to define um, a standard of request format, response format, operation name, and for endpoint, you are a lot of things you need to provide to uh, uh, define the services. So by defining services can be happened only in Vista, not in JSON format. OK, so JSON is good for the only for the messaging standard. It's lightweight protocol. We are we can able to support them, but it's not good for the writing the service or defending the service or like this. Okay. So, so Anup, you are you are. Uh... A place uh, attracted data power, or it is going through a broker into uh, uh, with the Java application. Yeah. 
So you don't have a broker? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, MQ is required, right? If you are interacted to to mainframe, you are probably going through MQ. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. MQ is correct to go. See, data power is active broker, right? Because data power is also same. It does the similar transformations and all those things what you do in broker. I, I, I may, you can, he can correct me. I think you can do the same transformations into, into the data power. It's a duplicate technology, but um, the data power is mainly used for B2B appliance. But broker is heavily used because I used to in the bank. We use, uh, we have 64 billion transactions happens every, uh, every month. So does it maintain the same session ID or to, to do a multiple hops, uh, the data power, similar like broker? No, data power is not recommended for uh, keeping the threat live. It's only act as a gateway. Yeah, uh, that's what I it thought because I when I built the architecture, it was only used as a gateway. Broker is the haps in the back end, and our front end applications were on uh, web server application server. Some of them were back end applications, some of them were front end applications. Yeah, I th I think you you you, you both are uh, you both are talking about uh, um, uh, the next level of the speech. But we are we are yet to the course starting the introduction level, so it's good to st talk like that. But we will cover some basic things. Then uh, you will get some idea about when and where to use. Then we will talk about the use case scenarios. Yeah, that's okay. You uh, that's okay. But uh, still, that's what I'm I'm saying. Um, so let's let's cover some things and we will have separate uh, days we will dedicate to discuss about the architectural use case and uh, hi here what I am my company is using here is my company is using why the why it's like that so we will use we will see some pros and cons like that but uh, today we will uh, I for first for first couple of days I would like to give you more uh, uh, introduction about the data power and how the data power is exactly working. So once you get to know about those things, then uh, we will basically talk about that use cases. Is it OK? Yeah, OK. OK. So there, uh, there is some disadvantages on the threats with XMLs. Uh, this this slide you can uh, take over because uh, people can able to use utilize the XML and they can able to uh, attack 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 the services. For example, if you define the schema, there's a there's a lot of uh, attacks can be happen in data power. Uh, sorry, not in data power in XML based communication. I will tell you by I will tell you for a couple of examples. So these disadvantages can be managed by a data pro appliance. Using the data pro appliance, all the XML based attacks and the SQL injection and a lot of security threats can be treated and it can be uh, handled only by configuration through a data power device. So that's what the data powers uh, uh, data powers playing a vital role in uh, security, and mainly data power used for three purposes: the gateway, and what is gateway? One is the security gateway, which is handling the all the security related things, uh, which can be developed, but it's configurable. It's all the security things can be configurable. And second thing is integration layer. It can be able to integrate with any backend systems. Uh, it can able to do a kind of transform, simple transformations, and 
uh, as Sajid said, it can able to use for business to business partner integration. So here they are giving, uh, uh, probably you will get this material. This is uh, giving you some uh, uh, security risk and what is the solution to uh, avoid the risk and how we can able to uh, avoid the risk uh, to avoid this XML kind of attack. The solution is we need to some 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 uh, device uh, know about the XML aware device, so which knows about the XML and XML attacks. So that is called data power now. So that's what they are trying to say. Um, so they are the, so they are giving some um, uh, uh, they are giving some features about data power. Uh, like data power has no hard, uh, no drives, USB drives, USB ports, and it's it's not a uh, operating system known by everybody. It's a separate operating system. Uh, it's it's uh, it's unknown firmware so that nobody cannot able to hack uh, trying to hack the data power and uh, a lot of things uh, you can able to see these things slides you can go through this material once you after the training class so this is the basic uh, um, difference between uh, implementing the xml based security server uh, using your own hand, like uh, in your own machine, like installing any Java based system or broker and creating a, a creating a, a gateway which is uh, handle the security. This is for right hand side, very complex architecture. And the left hand side you can see in data, but it's very simple because already all the everything is taken care by IBM and firmware, the new operating system. So it's a very simple uh, model. OK. So basically, uh, data power uh, can be you can data power. Data power can be used in uh, trusted zone as well as the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. So there is two devices can be actually in demilitarized zone. There is a security gate appliance can be used as well as the b2b appliance can be used also the xi integration appliance can be also so used in the demon hello yeah we used it actually in the dmz that's correct yeah because uh, xs xg45 is the security gateway but xi52 is the integration gateway even we call xi52 is the integration gateway xi52 is built in top of xg45 so you can use DMZ zone, XA52 in DMZ zone, or XG45 in DMZ zone, as well as the way you're communicating with business partners, and you can use B2B appliance in DMZ zone. These are the some kind of use cases scenario for uh, data power, uh, like securing a web service, legacy integration and web service management, portal acceleration. So we are going to see one by one. So this is the demilitarized zone they have a, a security gateway dmz means it's a demilitarized zone which is which means uh, the, the number th one is the internet right external external client this is the internet number three is your organ organization so there is a zone between uh, these stamps comes from military if you if you take if you if you if you consider about the two military uh, borders like um, for example, I can say US border and Canada border and the border is the one line code, but it's not saying that uh, you can easily cross the border line. There is a limit of the zone where the US people cannot enter into that their US zone as well as the Canada people cannot enter to the Canadian zone. So that bot that zone is called military zone. Demilitarized zone, which means even though it's your area, you cannot enter. Even though it's Canadian area, they cannot enter. So that zone, only the military people can able to enter. That is called demilitary zone. That is the time taken care, taken from the military and provided here. So between your organization and and the internet outside of outside of your organization, there's a zone called demilitarized zone, where where uh, where all where all the internet cannot come into the demilitarized zone, and uh, as well as all the inter Organization cannot go into demilitarized zone. Only authorized uh, IP address, authorized uh, 
devices can able to talk to the militarized zone okay got it can you show us the list of appliances any do you have a slide for this? You have. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, the list of list of appliances. So those uh, uh, power appliances, you know, X uh, X fifty two, right? Those appliances. List of do you have uh, each of them? One for the integration gateway, right? It's one of the security gateway. Can you uh, do you have the list? Yeah, I think uh, you have to watch my uh, uh, video in. Uh, let me check if I have. Uh, yeah. I have a video in. Um, in my website, you can able to you can see that video actually. So this is how the old appliances are looks like, different colors and different flavors, and uh, XS40, XA35, XA, XA50, XM70, XB60, also one more called XA10, which is casting appliance. Which are all pretty old appliances. Yeah, the one which is integrated of all there is one right. Which one is that? Hold on, let let me complete. Okay, these are all different. So this is the let next gen. XG45, XI52, XI52 B blade server, XB62, and add-on appliance. These are the add-on appliance. So the appliance looks like this block box. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I already know actually the appliance that we I used it. We had it actually, but I was not in charge of that. Give me some 10 minutes. So once I get into that, I will I will show you, okay? Okay. So since uh, so basically since we are starting today, I don't want to. Uh, um, we will cover these topics tomorrow, but I I will I would like to give you some hands on and I would like to give you some um, uh, good use case for this data power scenario. So since uh, Sayat is asked, uh, I will show you uh, how the all every all all in one appliance looks like. No, I don't know what's this. I think this is. So this is the data pro appliance which is running on the east zone. Everybody can able to access it. Mm. The worst thing I forgot my password or what. Yeah. So if you see here, uh, Syed, this is the appliance, which is called IDG. You can see the firmware, right? IDG 7.2.0.1 and which is the integration gateway it looks like this it, it has the b2b model and services model uh, which is the integration model as well as the um, uh, security model here the b2b model so it's just all if you want to do you see the device features you can see a uh, device and go to the device features and uh, 
you can able to see what are the features available and the enable available and what are all enabled so you can able to see um, what are the features has been enabled and available so evo hard i need to create a account for you Uh, so no, but I can create uh, right now. But I will create a separate domain for you, okay? So that you can do your thing. You can do, but I would advise use this for a uh, sample because this will be down for this is only up for three hour, four hours, seven to eleven p.m. Eastern Eastern time. Okay, which is running on the cloud. so i don't want to run for 24 hours yes yes basically you can take it 7:30 pm to 10:30 pm because starting will take some time and stopping will take some time so you can 7:30 pm to 10:30 pm you can use this appliance Uh, i will give you because i will tell you the domain is basically uh, how you maintain the profile in the vas or how you could have a context in a tomcat server like that's a sorry no domain is kind of see here so so it's basically the project based domain you can call or the project based one or application based one so basically which application which project you want to work basically create the separate domain for the project or application and go into that project and create your policy set your policies create your transformation or multi protocol gateway whatever you want services okay okay yes So, i have a, a vm we of uh, yeah, data yeah. power <laughs> so anu uh, i will make you as a presenter okay you can share your machine Share your screen. Okay. Share your screen. Okay. 